So as I've stated in previous videos, the other side is really big on free will and the importance of thinking for yourself and making your own decisions. They have a lot of respect for human free will because it's a focus on self-love, personal power, and the other side is constantly trying to boost people up as individuals. So part of following your truth is also turning inward and knowing what that truth is. So that's why they asked me to create this video talking about advice and how you should really be careful with it. A lot of times your friends will give you advice, which is great and fantastic. It's how they show their care and concern and love for you. But your spirit guides are asking you to take the advice, allow it to percolate, and see how it feels in your gut. Like, does this advice truly resonate with you? Does it really feel like your own individual truth? Because at the end of the day, you're held responsible for your free will decisions and you command universal energies via your free will decisions because universal energies respond to what you do decide. So that's why the other side wanted to make it clear that you are being accountable for your decisions. You're being held accountable for your decisions by the universe. So it's easy for your friends to throw advice at you, but you're the one that has to lead your own life and live the consequences of those decisions. So you have to be really careful where that advice is coming from because we all have that demon on one shoulder and the angel on the other. So your friends might not necessarily be speaking for the light. Now, I'm not trying to ruin all your relationships and create this, you know, distrust between you guys, but I also need you to be realistic in that oftentimes our friends do push us off course. And then oftentimes our friends put us back on course. So there's value in that advice, but you're being asked to use discernment when people give you that advice and just being really careful because there is a fine line. You never know. I mean, your friend, you know, could be speaking for the dark. You don't know. So that's why you really do have to take the information and let it sit with you and think about it and let it percolate and turn inward. Um, you know, because another thing is that, you know, friends don't always know the details of what you're going through. A lot of times that outside perspective is welcome, but then they also don't know the details of everything that's going on with you because they weren't there. So you're trying to explain the situation and they're doing the best they can. You're doing the best you can. You can. So just be sensitive to that. <laughs> That's really the point I'm trying to make. Because another thing that goes hand in hand with the advice that they're giving you is your intuition. That's really what I'm asking you to do when I you know, ask you to take the information in and allow it to percolate and see how your gut feels. You're turning inward and you are connected to what's called your higher self, which is the part of your soul that lives on the other side that's directly connected to the divine. So by turning inward, meditating, quieting your mind, you are connecting to your angels and your higher self. And they are all knowing. So they're going to know whether you should go left or right at each intersection. So that's why. Allow that advice to come in and then also check in with your spirit guides. Say, hey, you know, this person just told me this. I never even considered that idea. What do you guys think? Right? Because we're constantly coming up with great ideas. So take, take your friend's advice to your spirit guides and say, hey, what do you guys think? What's the deal? Yay or nay? And see how your gut feels and see if you get any answers, any signs, synchronicities, whatever they send you, whatever you can get. But that's really what it is. It's about seeing how the information feels, quieting your mind, and turning your brain into a big fat marshmallow. And another thing I wanted to add to this video on a real personal note, back when I was younger and a little less mature than I am now, is in romantic relationships. 
get into a fight with your romantic partner, <laughs> what do you do? What do you do with all that pent up emotion? You run straight to your friends. You run straight to your friends. And that's exactly what I did. I ran straight to my girlfriend. He said this and this and this. What do you think? He's a jerk. Let's go get some smoothies. I agree, he's a jerk. You forget it. I don't want to do this anymore. My pride, my ego kick in. All of a sudden, I hate the guy. And my girlfriends are all in my corner. Like, yeah. We hate him too. Ah. Was that a good idea? <laughs> Not really. Was I thinking for myself? Not really. Because I allowed my panel of judges over there, who love it, who, who love me, by the way. I, I love them. They love me, right? But I've allowed my panel of judges to determine my next steps. Break up with them. Ah. They weren't there. They don't know their circumstances. Maybe I was being really mean to him. They don't know that because the story I told them was probably swayed. Probably a little tilted in one direction there, to my benefit, right? <laughs> we all have different recollections of situations and events. So my friends are giving me, you know, care, concern, advice, but I'm not thinking for myself. I'm saying, well, they know better than I do because they're not jaded by love, whatever, their thought process is going to be clear. They're going to be more logical. So I'm just going to take their advice and then take it back to my, my boyfriend, right? No. <laughs> what about thinking for myself? What about thinking for myself? What about having my own thoughts, ideas, and opinions about my own relationship and about my boyfriend without getting that outside opinion all the time? Because you guys, I used to do that all the time. I used to do that all the time. And I'm telling you, please learn from my experience. Please learn from my experience. Please learn from what the other side is telling you through me. If you're watching this video, if you happen to stumble across it on YouTube, if you're in a romantic relationship, don't run to your friends for advice, you know, constantly. You just, it's not a good idea. Because what you're doing is you're placing your romantic partner in a petri dish for everyone to pick apart. And if they're placed under the microscope and just picked apart, it's dehumanizing, it's disrespectful, it's extremely disloyal. What if your romantic partner shares all this personal information with you and then you just go off and like tell it to your friends? That's so disloyal and so disrespectful. And how is your romantic partner supposed to trust you? So. I guess what I'm asking you guys to do is act as if your romantic partner was sitting in the room with you. Like, how would they feel if they were overhearing this conversation? Not so great. They wouldn't trust you. And then another thing is, is just the importance of finding your own answers. Your spirit guides know everything anyway. Your spirit guides see everything anyway. So they're a good group of people to refer to for advice because they were there. <laughs> they know exactly what happened between you and your boyfriend or girlfriend when you were fighting because they're all knowing. So the best advice is to take it to your angels, which is why it's important to develop your intuition. So take it to your angels and say, what do you think about this? Who's right and who's wrong? Am I being fair or not? So. That's why I want you guys to be a little more protective of your relationship privacy and the disclosure and just the respect. Um, and, you know, just be sensitive to that and know that the truth is inside you. You don't always have to look for answers outside the self. And I guess one of the reasons why this really hit home for me is because I feel like that was part of me being codependent. Me not really being able to think for myself and just being a total go where the wind takes me kind of person. I think that was part of my codependence and having that codependence beaten out of me has really helped me stand on my own two feet and think for myself more. But again, 
outside of that, it's so important to preserve your relationship because allowing other people into it just weakens it. It just, it just weakens your relationship. It weakens your bond. I mean, your romantic partner should be your priority anyway. I mean, yeah. So think twice before you guys go seeking that advice. Maybe take out a journal and, you know, or just meditate. Just meditate and focus on being true to yourself. Um, you guys are all connected to the divine. Pray for answers. Pray for guidance. Pray for it to come to you, but... Don't just run to this person and this person and this person because, you know, you can't think for yourself. You develop a stronger sense of self and more personal power and more self-love by literally being forced to come up with the answers yourself anyway. So that's pretty much what I wanted to share. Uh, I don't, you know, I've learned a lot. <laughs> the other side has taught me a lot. It's impossible to do what I do and be codependent anyway. I mean, Alison Armstrong definitely helped beat the codependence out of me. I made a video about it called um, Alison Armstrong Changed My Life. But at the end of the day, it's pretty impossible to run around calling yourself the absolute and being codependent because you really can't care what people think anymore anyway. So, so that was my own personal touch that I wanted to add to this video is been there, done that, got the t-shirt, please don't follow in my footsteps. Please don't make the same mistakes I did. I want you guys to learn from that. And so do they, which is why they said, yes, please make that video. <laughs> so I hope I helped you. And in the meantime, take care and be well. Thank you.